Good evening, everybody. It's Sunday evening, and I am just going to do a little bit of review for math here from Unit 2. We've been working on Unit 2 for a few weeks now, and uh, figured I'd just take a moment um, to be able to do some review. I think it's uh, always a good idea just to kind of take a step back and think about some of the things we've done and see if you can connect what we have done to what we're going to be doing in the next couple weeks. Um, because we only have a couple weeks left of the trimester. And then, yay, report cards come out and things like that. So uh, why don't we get started? So we've talked a lot about um, fractions being uh, involved with like clocks and money and time and, and all that so that we can make the connection between fractions and decimals, which is a huge part of what we're doing. Half dollar equaling 50 cents, which equals 50 over 100. You can see that right up in here, just like we had talked about quarter or dime, nickel or penny. And we've also used the clock, half hour, um, one third of an hour, kind of making that peace sign, you know, uh, with 20 minutes. And uh, we've done a lot of this. So let's review uh, quickly a money model. So do you remember what value each of these um, bits of money represent? Well, the dollar represents the entirety of this 100-piece uh, square. I'm assuming this is the 50-cent piece or the half dollar, and then the quarter, and so on. So those are some of the things we've been talking about. And with problem strings, we've been solving problem strings, doing all sorts of work with that with money. Showing three-fourths of a dollar. We've talked about how you can use multiple quarters, or you could use a combination of dimes and nickels and pennies with quarters to be able to help you get to three-fourths. Showing seven-tenths. Very much the same way. Now, one thing that we probably haven't talked much about is once you get to, um, to 100% or that, that dollar amount, what happens if you go over? Is this still a fraction? And if so, what does it look like? Well, in many cases, it looks like a mixed number where you have the large number and then the fraction alongside it. But what you see on the screen here is what's called an improper fraction. We've talked about that a little bit. We've had some problem strings. Vocabulary is important. Just remembering that the numerator is the number on top of the decimal and the denominator is what's below. You can add numerators and solve um, fraction addition problems or subtract them as long as the denominators are the same. So you hear a lot about in the next couple of weeks about um, making sure that our denominators are the same. And you've probably heard that already. Or being able to compare denominators. Basically what you're, um, what you're comparing things to, are you comparing halves or quarters or uh, thirds, uh, eighths, things like that. So we've seen some of this, one-fourth, one-tenth, one-fifth and one-half, nine-tenths, one-and-a-half. A lot of strategies, but we've used money to be able to help us, where if you have a quarter and a dime, one-quarter, one-fourth, one-tenth, a dime, you can take, a, take those coins and be able to tell yourself, oh, yeah, I can add that up. I do it all the time. And then you can convert those um, decimals to back to fractions. One fifth and one half. There's all sorts of things you can do. All right, we've had a pre-assessment, but we didn't uh, in my class. We did it in small group. Um, some daily practice. Oh, fractions on a clock face. Yes, this leads us towards that workspace game, which we have done, and we're getting there. Just showing you again when you have two dimes and four nickels or 20 pennies, what those fractions will look like. So just trying to remind you of that, you know, two dimes, that's two, and a dime is, is a tenth of a dollar, so two out of 10. Nickels are actually a 20th of a dollar, so you'd have four out of 20. 20 pennies out of a dollar, 20 over 100. And you can write it as the decimal as well. So a review of money facts, which we've done. All right, clock fractions. So a half hour is when you've spent 30 out of the 60 minutes, and you're all probably falling asleep wondering, is this going to last a half hour? 
I'm not planning on it lasting a half hour, but we'll see. And if I do some fraction jokes, which I'm reaching now for my phone, if I do some fraction um, jokes, which now I'm going to look some up. Okay, you've inspired me. I think I'm going to do that. Fraction jokes. Okay, I'll get to a few in a second here. All right, ooh, I found a website, 44 Best Fraction Jokes. Well, I bet there's only like three or four of them that are actually any good. Should we try one? What did the evil fraction say? You will never stop my plans for world, world denomination. A denominator joke. It's kind of lame. Anyway, <clears throat> let's take a look at, we had one-sixth, which is, uh, we've also equated this to pizza, 12 slices of pizza. Um, well, one-sixth would be doubling one of those 12 slices to two out of 12 slices. But then when you look at this quantity, it is also one-sixth of the total, and it's equal, one-sixth equaling two twelfths. Well, for clocks, one-sixth is every 10 minutes. 10 minutes is one-sixth. 20 minutes is two-sixths, also known as one-third. Uh, 30 minutes is three six, also known as one half. So you can take a look at these and you'll see, oh, there's our peace sign and there's our one third. Or as my friend Billy up north would say, one third. All right, moving ahead. Fractions on a clock face. We've talked about this quite a bit. And there's our clock. How many minutes in an hour? Well, duh. Like 35, right? No, there's 60 minutes in an hour. Where do we see minutes on the clock? In these little spaces in between, those tiny little spots where you just wish right now that this was spinning like crazy so you wouldn't have to watch any more of this. Which reminds me of a joke. I have another joke for you. Um, I recently had a heated debate with a mathematician about fractions. It's fair to say that our opinions were divided. You didn't like that one? All right. A math teacher welcomed, hold on, let's see here. Uh, no, nah, I'm not gonna read that one. It's kind of cheesy. That's like, it's a really long one and the punchline's dumb. You know, those really long jokes. I should tell, we should have really long joke day where the punchlines don't make sense. You'd love that. All right. My math teacher keeps telling me to simplify my fractions. <laughs> I do I do it 48 over 14. What? <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. 48 fourteenths? I don't understand that. Okay, that's a dumb joke and it's a short one. Okay, uh, let's see. This is, okay, this is the dumbest website that said it had 44 of the best jokes. Um, let me try. Oh, I should move on. You're probably getting bored. Okay. So we had some, we've had some reflection time just now where we had a chance to hear some fraction jokes. Um, oh, here's one other joke. Five out of four people admit that they're bad at fractions. I'll just let you think about that one for a second. You might have to rewind it. Um, problem st strings and clock fractions. We did this in small group as well. But here's some problem strings. One half hour equals 30 minutes. 30 out of 60 also equals 6 over 12, which equals 3 out of 6, which equals 2 out of 4. Okay, you can say them 2 out of 4 or 3 out of 6, but you also can say them 2 fourths, 6 twelfths, 30 sixtieths. Okay, a quarter of an hour is 15 minutes. A quarter of a dollar is 25 cents, but a quarter of an hour is 15 minutes, and we're talking about um, clocks. It's also equal to 15 sixtieths or three twelfths. Then you can see one third. All right, it's time for an orange Kool-Aid break. As you all know, there's nothing much better than orange Kool-Aid. So, and I have the good ice right there. So I gotta have some orange Kool-Aid. Mmm, nummy. Matches my sweatshirt. All right, next one. So when we look at problem strings, when we do one half, we can shade in a half of the circle. 
we can make the peace sign and shade in one third of this one. So if we take the one half and throw the peace sign piece onto this one to put them together, because that's what adding is asking you to do, we will have shaded, well, we shaded six pieces here, four pieces here. So it's essentially a six plus four problem. Six plus four is 10 out of 12. 10 out of 12. Also, if we were to make those sixths like we did before, it would be five sixths. Mr. G, you're so smart. No, I'm not. I'm not that. You don't have to say that. You know, it's that's too nice. One third and one fourth. Well, if we make our peace sign, we know that one third is equal to four of these sections. One fourth is a quarter, which is also half of a half. That's equal to three of these sections. So it's like four plus three. We're going to end up with seven of these portions shaded. Seven out of 12. How'd you know that, Mr. G? I don't know. Just kind of new. All right, right here. I'm just kidding. I, I've been teaching this for a long time. I hope I get to pass fifth grade sometime, though. It's been my 28th try. One sixth, three fourths. Well, one sixth was like that one um, slide we had earlier. We had one twelfth, you know, one piece, of one out of 12, and then we had two twelfths. And we discovered, oh my goodness, two twelfths is the same as dun, da, 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 one sixth. So if you take this whole thing and divide it into six portions, you'll get two hash marks for every portion. Whoa. So this is like having two pieces of pizza. And three-fourths is like having nine. So two plus nine is, um, I don't know, 11. 11 twelfths. Man, this is amazing. There's more. We're going to do those later after a joke. So the last joke was five out of four people admit they're good at fraction or bad at fractions. Hmm. Oh, here's a good one. I think you'll like this one. This one is for Justin. I don't understand why people use fractions instead of decimals. It's pointless. Yeah, I suppose. And then there's a, um, on this website, there's a joke that says, search for the best invisible teeth aligners. Oh, that's an ad. Whoops. All right. Um, okay, hold on. Let's see. There's got to be another good one here. Okay, hold on. Nope, they aren't very good. This this thing, this lied. Okay. Website, can you believe the internet lies? These are not good jokes. Okay, now I'm gonna find silly puns. You know, puns. Okay. All right. Moving oh, I'm sorry, I gotta move on. You probably have been staring at these long enough where you could probably work on those on your own. Clock fraction game. My class we played this last week you spin and you spin and you color things in and you color things in and you try to see um okay now i'm forgetting how to play the game it was last week and i've had a long weekend um anyway you remember how to play this game you're trying to i think make um you're just trying to fill in the whole circle and then fill in the whole other circle and you have to get three circles filled is that right yes mr g that's right Thank you. Then there's some optional practice. And we get two problem strings that involve subtraction this time. Not everything's adding. Sometimes people take stuff from you. You know, like that one time Ava was taking stuff from me, or Kimmy was, or um, who's that kid that came up and took stuff from me? Oh, yeah, hold on. No, it was um, it was Anwar. No, it wasn't Anwar. It was, um, oh, who was it? I think, oh, yeah, it might have been Lily or, no, no, not Lily. It was, um, um, shy. No, not shy. She wouldn't do that. Um, let's see. Maybe it was Caitlin. Yeah, Caitlin. It was Caitlin, wasn't it, everybody? Okay. All right. How would you solve this problem? I'm going to get my teacher glasses on. Matthew walked to the park to go skateboarding. It takes a quarter of an hour to walk to the park. He rode his skateboard for a third of an hour. Then he walked back home. So he, it took him a quarter of an hour, which is 15 minutes, to get to the park. He rode a skateboard for a third of an hour, which is that peace sign, which we know everything is 20, 20, 20. So 20 minutes he played there, then he walked back home. He walked back home. So he rode, let's see, 
he oh he walked for 15 minutes he rode for 20 he walked back home which must have taken another 15 minutes wouldn't you think so 15 plus 15 is 30 plus 20 is dun, da, 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 7 billion i mean 50 50. so what fraction is that well we could say it's 50 out of 60 50 out of an hour, you know, an hour is 60 minutes, so 50 minutes out of 60. We could also say it's 5 out of 6. Whoa! Reducing fractions and putting them in simplest form. Mr. G, that's whew, way over my head. All right, let's take a look at another subtraction problem. 1 half minus 1 fourth. Well, you can look at it as money. Half of a dollar is 50 cents. A quarter of a dollar is a quarter, which is 25 cents. 20, 50 minus 25 is 25. Convert that back, and it's known as a fourth. Look at the clock. Half an hour is 30 minutes. A quarter of an hour is 15 minutes. 30 minus 15 is 15, which is a quarter of an hour, we just said, right? So the whole thing is, the answer is a quarter. And we're going to work with frac um, fractions on subtraction quite a bit. Because they're going to start looking like this. Three-fourths, which is also the same as, as three-quarters. 75 cents. Well, if you take a dollar and divide it into five parts, each one of those parts is going to be 20 cents. So 75 minus 20 is somewhere between 0 and 100. 55 cents. So our decimal would be 0. 0.55. Our fraction would be 55 over 100. And if we had to simplify it, it's a little bit more than half. Uh, that doesn't really help much. But if we simplified it, it would be 11 over 20. Now, could you show that as a clock fraction? I think that'd be harder. Because we don't really have a fifth of an hour, do we? A fifth of an hour. Let's see, an hour, 60 minutes, divided into five parts. Mm -hmm. Somebody out there knows. One of you out there knows dividing 60 minutes into five parts. But um, think about that then, since you do know, 45 minutes minus that magical amount of time, how much uh, do you have left? And then, what? that's out of 60, so it's quite a heavy-duty fraction. Uh, 45 minus <coughs> 12, <coughs> 12 um, which gets you to 33 out of 60 minutes. And I'm going to stop right here. Um, three-fourths minus two-fifths. Well, we just did three-fourths minus one-fifth, which was for, um, 75 cents minus 20 cents. Well, two-fifths is double the one-fifth, so that's 40 cents. 75 minus 40 would have to give us 35 cents out of a dollar, 0. 0.35. 35 over 100. That makes sense. And then on the clock fraction, I had you try to figure out what one-fifth of an hour was. And somebody coughed up something and said, <coughs> 12 minutes. <coughs> 12 minutes is one-fifth. But two-fifths would be double that amount of time. Three-fourths of an hour is 45 minutes. Minus the 24 minutes gets us 21 minutes out of 60. Which is a little bit more than that peace sign that we made before. 21 out of 60... Wait, can we reduce that? What goes into 21, but also goes into 60? I think 3 does. 3 goes into 21 7 times. 3 goes into 60 20 times. So you get 7 20ths. Way to go, Mr. G. All right, everybody. That was a lot of fun. Wouldn't you agree that was one of the greatest parts of your day? When we could talk about Unit 2 and be able to compare things to money and time. It was so rewarding. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I'm so glad you're a part of this broadcast. If you have fraction jokes, put them in the comments and maybe I'll read those at another time. But in the meantime, four out of three people are really good at fractions and I will see you next time.